want to do a quick review. Here we've got two little gold buttons that we've recovered so far. And I'm going to try to work with those and repurify those. Over here I've got about four grams of platinum group metals that we've recovered so far. And I'm going to do a purification on those metals. Uh, this is the uh, fil filtered out solids that I recovered. I wasn't sure if that's rhodium or not. But what I'm going to do is a couple of experiments to see if we can uh, get some of that to go into solution and then test it for the presence of rhodium. And then this is my silver that I've recovered so far. You can see the level in the bucket is about halfway up here here to here halfway so that's about a quarter of a bucket this is a two gallon bucket so quite a bit of silver here and I don't think I'll be showing or doing anything else with this this will just get melted into shot and run through my electrolytic silver cell all right this is a picture of the silver that we got from this series there's probably uh, six or seven kilos of silver there Got another six kilos or so of powdered silver in this bucket and I got another kilo and a half in here so I got about 15 kilos of silver and normally what I do is melt it in this little melt dish but uh, this is just too much silver to try to do that with what I have here is a uh, stainless steel burner for a propane furnace I bought this on eBay. I'll post the uh, link in my description of this video. It's made out of stainless steel. It's well made. It's well constructed. It's already all configured. So I could have made my own, but this was uh, 20 bucks with $17 shipping. So it was about 40 bucks. And uh, I've ordered a couple of crucibles. I got to order some castable cement, factory cement to make the uh, furnace. So I just wanted to uh, give an update here on what we're going to be doing to get this silver melted into shot so I can run it through my silver cell. We're going to begin by dissolving our uh, 4.3 grams of black PGM powders down here. This is going to be mostly palladium and platinum. And what I'm going to do, I've got a stir plate set up here got a stir bar let's drop that in and I'm going to add about 50 milliliters of acid this is hydrochloric acid add about 50 milliliters here Here. 
that shouldn't be a concern going forward because that will all get used up in this reaction so we shouldn't have any excess nitric in here at all to guarantee that we're going to use a hydrogen peroxide uh, from this salon care 40 volume to uh, put all these metals in solution here I'm going to have a little bit of a mishap. I decided to leave it in the video to show folks what not to do. Notice that the stopcock on that funnel is in the open position. When I pour this solution in, it goes right through the funnel and all over the floor. An example of what not to do. Make sure the uh, stopcock is in the closed position before we try to fill it. this to heat. I'm going to get set up to start adding hydrogen peroxide. I'm going to pour a little bit of the hydrogen peroxide in this uh, septoy funnel. And we're going to use this as an addition funnel. I'm going to set it up here in this little uh, ring stand that I have set up above our reaction here. Get this adjusted. Celsius, 143 Fahrenheit. Now what I'm going to do is uh, adjust this so we get a slow drip going into our uh, beaker here. This thing has been on stirring now for about an hour, maybe a little longer. So what we're going to do now is take this, look underneath. I think we do. I think we've got it all dissolved. So what we'll do now, and I've got it just about the right concentration. milliliters I mean it just a little bit lower so what I may need to do here is continue to let this uh, heat up till I get it down to about 85 86 milliliters and go from there I've got all this uh, platinum group metals dissolved now I'm trying to get 4.3 grams of material a solution that's 20 milliliters per gram so I need this solution to concentrate to about 86 milliliters and I'm almost there I'm going to transfer this back here on this uh, heating pad back here let this continue to evaporate and while we're doing that I've got this uh, material in this filter here 
quite sure what it is. It may be rhodium. I don't know. I'm completely uh, in the dark about what this might be. But we're going to put it in this beaker over here. I'm going to add a stir bar. Stick it up here on our uh, hot plate stirrer. And now I've got some concentrated sulfuric acid, 98% concentrated sulfuric acid. And I'm going to add some to our beaker here. And we're going to try to uh, put some of this rhodium, if it is rhodium, and try to get some in solution and then see if we can uh, detect it with some stannous chloride. Sulfuric acid, 98% sulfuric acid going in right now. Okay, we're going to turn the heat off on this now, turn off the stir bar, let that cool down, and then over here, I've got the uh, platinum group metals, platinum and palladium, uh, simmered down to the correct volume, I'm going to let this cool down now, and then once we get these uh, solutions cooled down, we'll go from here. Some folks have asked about the test strips that I use to uh, do those stannous chloride tests. And all it really is, is pieces of filter paper that I cut up. Into little strips here. And then I use these as my test strips to do my stannous chloride tests. Now that took me five minutes, four pieces of filter paper or so, and I've got enough in there for a hundred tests both of these solutions to cool the ambient temperature. I'm going to reach in here with a little piece of filter paper now. And just get the corner of that on there. Just a very little tiny black speck. Let it uh, kind of seep into the paper there if it's going to do that for me. And now we're going to put some stannous chloride on this. paper down into this solution, get a little bit of the stuff on there, and we'll do a stannous test on this now, and it turns very dark, I can see a green color towards the edge, and then on the bottom there I see an orange looking color, it's green and orange, which is what I should see. Stannis test on here didn't produce any kind of color. I'm going to call this experiment here a bust. I didn't uh, get any kind of good result out of there boiling that gray material in sulfuric acid. So I'm going to set this back out of the way and we're going to turn our attention now to the uh, platinum group metals here I have in solution. 
what I'm going to do is I'm using some hydrochloric acid here to dampen the filter, filter paper. And uh, we don't want to use water because water tends to change the pH levels. And these platinum group metals are sensitive to that kind of stuff. A lot more chemistry involved here. You got to watch what you're doing. I do see a little bit of sediment down in the bottom down there, so I'm not going to pour 100% of this into this filter. I don't want that sediment down into our uh, solution here. And we're trying for a concentration level of about, what I say, 86 milliliters for the amount of solids that we had. I'm using a small filter paper here uh, so that we don't trap a bunch of our metals in solution in the paper. So that tells me that we uh, pretty much got everything put in solution. I'm going to rinse it carefully here with a little hydrochloric acid. You know what? I do see some stuff down in there. Pour a little bit of this off. Yeah, there's some solids in there. I'm not sure what that is. Might be some zinc. So I'm going to stop. I'll add this little bit that's in the uh, beaker here to my stock pot. And then we'll uh, rinse the uh, filter out with a little hydrochloric acid. Try to get as much of the platinum and palladium solution rinsed out of the filter paper as we can. some solid material left in the bottom of the beaker not quite sure what that is but I'm gonna leave that in there and not add it to our uh, our filter here because I don't want to uh, risk any of that stuff going through the filter and contaminating our uh, solution this is another example of the uh, difference between refining gold and silver and platinum group metals no matter what you do with the platinum group metals you can never get 100% of everything uh, with gold and silver you can get 100% of the silver and the gold to come out of those solutions but that is not true Sometimes you got to leave a little bit behind to avoid uh, contaminating your uh, main batch. Got everything through the filter. Let's get this funnel out of the way now. And what we'll do is I've got some ammonium chloride here. And we're going to mix up. solution of it That's probably gonna be enough for the amount that we uh, only got a couple of grams of platinum and palladium in here and it's about the right level let me see if you can see that I got it concentrated at about uh, just over 75 right about 80 milliliters so that should be good for what we're trying to accomplish here add some distilled water to our ammonium chloride here and make a solution The uh, 
uh, solution down here in our flask is going to have platinum and palladium in solution. And we're going to use the ammonium chloride to precipitate out the platinum. And uh, the solution will then just have palladium in it that's been infused with ammonium chloride. And that's what we need for the next step to uh, get the palladium. It's got to be uh, infused with lots of ammonium chloride. Whether or not there's platinum in here or not, we've got to add ammonium chloride to this solution to get our palladium in the next step. You want to be real here? So I uh, advise against buying this brand of ammonium chloride. You look over here at our uh, beaker here. Got a uh, cloudy solution with suspended particles in it. That's not how that should look. And uh, this is ammonium chloride, but it's cheap ammonium chloride. I could use this. But what I'm going to have to do is filter it now. So the stuff I get from GFS Chemicals is top quality. It goes into solution and it doesn't have a bunch of stuff floating around in it like this one does. So avoid this brand. I wouldn't recommend this one. Got a filter set up up here. What we're going to do now is pour our ammonium chloride solution through the filter down into our uh, solution here that contains our platinum group metals and this should produce some uh, hexachloroplatinate ammonium hexachloroplatinate when I mix this uh, ammonium chloride solution into our beaker here. Here we go. I'm going to pour in right now. Here we go through the filter. You should see platinum precipitate out when I get this solution in the beaker. As soon as I uh, seen the ammonium chloride going into that uh, platinum metal and palladium metal solution, I knew something was wrong right away. What we should be seeing here is a fine-grained, bright yellow precipitate that looks like talcum powder, yellow talcum powder. But instead, what we're seeing is a thick brown uh, precipitate that uh, is not the proper stuff that we're supposed to be seeing here and uh, what I'm going to have to do is redissolve those crystals in some dilute hydrochloric acid and start all over. What happened is I've got the uh, solution too concentrated. When it's over concentrated like I have it here, uh, those thick brown PD2 crystals form in there and uh, ruins the reaction. So I'm going to have to start over, dissolve those crystals that are forming in there right now, and then uh, go from there. I found these instructions from Ray Ovius, a goldrefiningforum.com user from many years ago who wrote this instruction to me when I was trying to do some uh, uh, refining. He says, what you have to critically evaluate is concentrating it, the solution, to around 20 milliliters per gram. Let it cool and see if there is orange, yellow, fine grain, platinum salt appearing without the thick and dense PD2 salt. That's what I've got in my solution, this PD2 salt. If yes, you are good to go for filtration. If the PT salt 
if it's orange, yellow PT salt is appearing with the usual suspect thick PD2, then you would have to dilute it a bit with a 50-50 distilled water, hydrochloric acid, give it some heat until the thick PD2 salt disappears, and then go for filtration. So that's what we'll have to do to resolve the problem of that thick, dense brown precipitate in our solution. Well, this is not how our solution is supposed to look. Uh, what we're supposed to have here is a fine grain uh, platinum precipitate on the bottom of our beaker there. And instead, we got these uh, other weird looking crystals. And I've had this happen before. And what it indicates is that uh, I had the solution too concentrated. So what we're going to have to do now is go back in, re-dissolve this with hydrochloric acid. That will put everything back in solution. This will conclude part 8 of the series. The uh, precipitation with ammonium chloride didn't go as planned. I think I had the concentration of our solution wrong. I had it too concentrated. And that precipitate that I got from the ammonium chloride is how it uh, reacts when the solution is too concentrated. The uh, rhodium test was a negative test. I didn't see any uh, indication of rhodium in that solution where I uh, boiled it in sulfuric acid. So that was a negative uh, outcome on that. And also I didn't even get a chance to get to the two little gold beads. And uh, we'll try to do that in part nine of the series. So the series continues. I'm gonna have to do some research and find out how to fix my solution out there. There's a fix for it, but I can't remember what it, what it is. I'm gonna have to research it. So this will conclude part eight of the series. Thanks for watching.